Hello YouTube. Recently I ran a poll on LinkedIn to try and understand from people if some of the basic measurement terms like MAT, QTD, LY, AOP, etc. are things which they are extremely comfortable with or they are things which either used to bother them or it currently bothers them. As you can see, almost 65% of people have either been bothered by it in the past or they continue to be bothered by it currently. Looking at these results meant that I had to do something about it and therefore I am making this video and hopefully once I send it out into the universe it will stop being a botheration for people who've seen it. My name is Rahul and I'm the creator of Business of Marketing which is the online channel for Decode Strategy Labs a marketing consulting and education company. Three quick things before I begin. One, I provide an online course on strategic marketing which is a must do if you want to earn that seat on the marketing decision table. The course starts with a lot of basic things just like this video and then gradually handholds you all the way into marketing strategy. The link is in the description box below. Do check it out. Two, there's a ton of free resources on my website which will give you a taste of the actual course. Link is below. Do check it out. And three, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you should absolutely do that now. So let's begin. The first terms that I'll be talking to you about are YTD, QTD, MTD or year to date, quarter to date, month to date. What they represent is data from the beginning of the year or the beginning of the quarter or the beginning of the month until that particular day. In the case of year to date data, it is important to check what is considered as the start of the year, whether it's the 1st of January, which is usually the case as in calendar year or the start of the financial year, which could be a date which is different from the 1st of January. Why are these terms used? At any point in the year, we look at data from the start of the year to understand how far we've reached or we could look at data from the start of the quarter or the start of the month to check the same. To understand the achievements made during the year, quarter or month, this expression of data comes in handy. The next term I want to explain is YTD LY. This represents data from the beginning of the previous year until the same date in the previous years. Similar to YTD data, it could be based on calendar year that is the 1st of January or financial year in case it is different from the 1st of January. When do you use YTD LY? Just like it's important to know how much you have achieved in the current year, it is also good to know the same for the previous year. It is a good way to track the progress made in the current year by comparing it with progress made by the same time in the previous year. The third term is AOP or annual operating plan. This can be called something else in different organizations. Generally, it is a term used for the budgeted figure or the target that was defined. This represents the data compared to the budget or the target that has been set for the year. When is it used? Just like it is important to know how much was achieved in the current year, it is also important to know how much is the achievement compared to the target that has been set for the year. At any point in time, you can compare it with what you should have achieved by that period in the year to get a sense of whether you are on course to achieve your remaining numbers or not. These measurement terms help us understand where we stand in the current year, what was it like in the previous year and how are we doing when compared to our targets. They are extremely useful for these specific purposes. However, if your intention is to understand trends and not just the specific data, then these terms might not be very useful. What do you do in such kind of situations? And that's where the next two terms come into play. The first one is MAT or moving annual total. This term represents data for the sum of the previous 12 months. This is a rolling yearly sum. So it changes every month with data from the new month added to the total and data from the first month taken away. When is it used? Usually a lot of fluctuations happen when it comes to monthly data for things like sales and revenues and things like that. However, when one uses MAT instead of looking at each individual month, the data evens out and gives a much better picture of the overall trend. Therefore, its main use is to look at data holistically that is instead of looking at each month specifically, one can see the overall trend that is emerging from the data. 
And the next term is called moving average. Marketers are often working with a lot of data. There could be daily, weekly, monthly versions of data for several performance elements that they might be tracking. With such data, while it is important to understand the details, it is not the best when it comes to recognizing trends that can help with making decisions. And this is where moving average comes in. Moving average is the calculation to analyze data points by creating a series of averages. I'm going to show you an example with the three month moving average. However, the number of months can change or the unit can change from months to days to weeks. It all depends on the kind of trend that you are looking for. So you can see in this example, we've got the different months on one side. In the next column, we've got the sales for each of the individual months. Now, when you add the sales for the first three months, you get 275. So that's the three month moving total. And then similarly, in the next row, you will see that we have removed the sales for the first month and we have added the sales for the fourth month. And that's how you get the three month moving total as 288. In the same way, the last column shows you the three month moving average. So if you take the sales for the first three months and divide that by three, you get 91.66. And similarly, in the next row, you remove the sales of the first month, you add the sales of the fourth month and you divide that by three and you will get 96. Why is moving average used? When you want to look at long-term trends, you can smoothen the data. If you plot the regular data into a graph, it looks bumpy and it's hard to identify if there's a trend that is emerging or a pattern that is emerging from it. And this is where the moving average data comes in very handy. And that brings me to the end of today's video. I'm sending this out into the universe, hoping that anyone who comes across this video will not be confused with these measurement terms again. Three things before I go. First, you must check out the strategic marketing course. I have poured in 15 years of my experience of working with multiple brands into this one single course. It's your shortcut to earning that seat on the marketing decision table. Two, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any thoughts or comments, drop them in the comment section below. Three, there are a ton of free resources that I have already put up on my website and I will keep updating it with more and more. So if you haven't already seen it or downloaded any of the free resources, you should do that now. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you in my next video.